Morad, Sashoram Nandi, Sashoram Nandi, Tata Tata no Pala, Tata no Pala, Awe Ashoram Nandi, Sashoram Nandi, Amakwa na Somale, Asomale. Sashoram Nanti, Sashoram Nanti, Tata Tata no Pala, Tata no Pala, Awe Sashoram Nanti, Sashoram Nanti, Amakwa na Somale, Somale. That's all i who ends you, Sasso Bosa? Who ends this out? I more like a complete. I quite. Yalla le 
irmão. É suruma, suruma, suruma. Oliver Tambo, 
Bala, Hatana Bala. I saw I'm Nandi, I saw I'm Nandi. Manta, Kena Creatives, Kena. Away with the fair, you see, away. Away with the fair, you see, away. Kena Safe Sakena. Kena ANC, Kena. Shangana ANC, Shangana. Mancha, 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 Arona, all power, all power. Freedom General is entering the venue, comrades. Can we all stand up and sing as the SG is making his way through? <laughs> Sallatatin <laughs> Bonne 
Mosa, Hila, Soy, 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 Lula is entering, comrades. Let's rise up and appreciate him. 
Let's who has matters, my daughter. The SG of the African National Congress is here. Comrades, we can now start officially with our program. Amanda. Away to Amanda. Viva Sifsa Viva. Viva Sakaev Viva. Viva Samro 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 Viva. Amanda. Away to Oh, comrades, can we all be seated? Oh, okay. No. Yeah. I agree we are removing everyone in the program. We allow these people to present. I think now, Comrade SG, we are ready to can officially commence with our program, where as the ANC NEC subcommittee, we have decided to engage with the sector on the creative industry on the copyright amendment bill. Before we commence officially with our, our program, comrades, I'll request that we all rise and sing the national anthem and the AU anthem. Those who are males who are having heads as a sign of respect to our national anthem, let's take them off. Sing the AU anthem. Let's not sit down.
Thank you. We may all be seated. Comrades, without any waste of time, let me take this opportunity and introduce the leadership of the African National Congress that is here in this sectoral engagement. I'll read out their names. They just wave out to you so that you don't think that you are here to talk to yourselves. But the whole leadership of the African National Congress, NEC, is here to listen to you. Comrades, you are pleased to be joined by the Minister of Arts and Culture, who's also a member of the Subcommittee on Arts and Culture, Comrade Zizi Goto. He can rise up to wave to you. Let's appreciate him. We are also being joined by Comrade Andile Lungisa, who's the member of the Subcommittee, who's here with us. Comrade Mbanjwa. We have the deputy chairperson of the subcommittee, Comrade Donald Slamulela. We have Comrade Stelanda Beni, who's also a member of the subcommittee on arts and culture and sports. We have Comrade Pule Mavi, the former TG of the Youth League. Mr. Economic Freedom in our lifetime, can he just greet you? We also have Comrade Togodi Diza, who is a member of Economic Transform Transformation Subcommittee on behalf of the NEC, Comrade Togo. We have the president of CIFSA, who is here with us, Comrade, Comrade Joem Bewana, and all other affiliates. I want to introduce our main guest because we are going to get into that item when it is time to, to speak to you. Comrades, my name is Tandi Muraga, the chairperson of the Subcommittee on Arts and Culture on behalf of the NEC. I'm going to be the one who direct the program and I'm going to request that you pardon us for uh, Commencing with our program at this late hour of the day, we were intending to commence at 10 o'clock, but we know that we are meeting with a sector that is so busy on weekends. This is the opportunity for you comrades to go and make money through your gigs, and we understood that you had to be afforded time to do that and also come here and grace the occasion. Can we clap hands for yourselves? Comrade SG, we are meeting here with the sector as a subcommittee after we have met with them on numerous occasions where we dealt with them in the process of consolidating the views that are within the sector when it comes to the two bills that are before Parliament. Those bills are the Copyright Amendment Bill and the Performance Amendment Bill and comrades, I need to indicate here that our position as a subcommittee still stands that the views of the sector in terms of the clause on the Copyright Amendment Bill, when it speaks about fair dealing, needs to be revoked. We are calling for the ANC to intervene as the African National Congress subcommittee, as we have done throughout our engagements with yourselves to make it a point that the bill is being turned back to Parliament so that the views of the sector are being consolidated at a broader space. <laughs> and comrades, we are not here to blame any of our comrades who are either in government and also in the National Assembly. We are here as a subcommittee simply saying to you as a sector that all is not lost. We can still manage to arrest the situation and make it a point that the bill comes back as a law that then makes it possible for you to grow your talents and also to grow yourselves economically. 
We are going to move ahead with our program. Ours is not to repeat what we've been saying to you. And our plea to all of you as participants is that as you engage with the leadership, please bear in mind that the ANC has always appreciated the creative industry sector. From the process of fighting against the apartheid regime and to the point of defeating it, we have been allowing the sector to be at the forefront of that particular revolution. We are not going to start now to abandon you as our most important, important sector of our society. We have seen it happening through Abu Tata, uh, Hugh Masikele, and Abu Mama, Miriam Makeba, when they sang those songs driven by the revolutionary positions that they held at that time. And we are still saying to you that we are here as the African National Congress to walk the journey with you as we work together towards transforming society as a whole. Comrades, without much ado, I'm going to then request that we call on to the podium the General Secretary of Tumza to come and talk to us, Comrade Gabi Liru, who will then be followed by Comrade Kola Mahamate on behalf of Samro, and then followed by the President of CIFSA. Comrades, all of you, I'm affording you 15 minutes to address these engagements. Okay, comrades, we have the presence of comrade Magdalene Luella, who's the member of the Veterans League and also a member of the subcommittee. Comrade Magdalene. Yo, I, al I almost made the biggest mistake of my life. There is a member of the subcommittee who's very artistic in his nature and very passionate about the issues that affect artists. Comrade Supra Mahomapil. Forward to Pico Lens on the 29th of May. Forward. Forward. <laughs> That's Supra Mahomapil for you. Comrades, let's afford these organizations that opportunity. And as they speak, comrades, let's respect them. We don't want to howl at anyone. We must respect the decorum of this engagement. Comrade Gabi will be followed by Comrade Mahamate and Comrade Joem Bewana will be the last one in that sequence. Long live our beautiful NC, long live. Long live the unity of a renewed ANC cadres. Long live. I speak to you today with two hats. As you can see, I'm wearing the one. But I'm also here representing the musicians of South Africa. Um, and I'm going to use my 15 minutes, really, to not play a blame game. As uh, Comrade Tandi said, we're here today to have a constructive outcome. And truly, firstly, we want to thank the subcommittee on, on, on arts and culture of, of the ANC for giving us this opportunity. Please give the subcommittee a big, big hand for that. I'm going to give you a brief, uh, just a brief uh, overview of the process that brought us here. Uh, you must remember that it's, been, it's two administrations later, and essentially the first administration passed the bill, same thing, it went through the NCOP, it passed the bill, our, our president, Ramaphosa, took 13 months to apply his mind and to do the right thing, but thereby proving that he's really the president of this country, to do the right thing for the people. That's why we are confident today that we can once again bring it to him and to point out to him, President, again, we are in the same situation, do the right thing. Around about 2015... Uh, there was the first moves to amend the Copyright Amendment Bill from 1978. There are a few small adjustments in 1996. But with the advent of our new democracy uh, in 94, and at the same time, the, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, the massive and the quick changes in technology 
and the massive changes in distribution of music and other content via the internet, etc. There was a desperate need for this bill to be amended, to come in line with us being a sovereign nation, being a unified nation with a new democracy where everybody is politically emancipated. In 2015, was the first, um, was the first draft was published, and like anything, it's like when you're playing darts, you play, you play the first dart to try and get it as close to the bull, to the bull as possible, and you get then inputs, people direct you, all the various stakeholders direct you. By the time 2016 came, it was the second, uh, it was the second draft. But now I want to point out, just on a, on a small personal note, myself and Don Laka, we sat in 2015, we looked at this draft, and our eyes first fell on, on, sex, on section 10, which beautifully encompassed one of the major things that were recommended by the two reports that gave rise to the amendment of this bill. One was the MITT report in to, around 22, 20, 2002, Music Industry Task Team report. Then uh, Mshaloz engaged us at Gallagher House, I think it was in 20, 2009, we, we, we spoke with President Zuma at the time. He asked us what our problems were. We were able to express many, many of the problems that we had. The CRC report uh, followed in 2011. And in 2011, once again, this report stressed a number of things. But one thing that stood out to Brad Don Luck and myself in 2015 was the need for South African content, be it music, be it arts, be it crafts, be it fashion, be it uh, audiovisual expression, literature, to become absolutely independent, to remove ourselves from the shackles of colonialism and apartheid and become truly Afrocentric and move forward and to create a cultural and a, and a creative economy that supports our Africanism and our independence as a brand new and free democracy. We were overjoyed when we saw that draft. But it went to Nedlack, it made a turn there, and by 2016 we looked at the draft again and I went straight to that page where, where section 10 was. Two, it was gone. When I asked what happened to this beautiful, uh, this beautiful clause on the need for the recognition of local traditions, uh, in the, uh, indigenous knowledge systems, uh, our, our local cultures, our beautiful, diverse culture with so many amazing um, uh, uh, elements that gives an appetite to the rest of the world to look at us as a sovereign nation with its own culture that they are hungry for. And that was gone. And when I asked, they said, it doesn't belong in the copyright amendment bill. I said, why? No, there's another bill where we can have that. And from there started our struggle, comrades. From there, we realized also that the, the way that the, the two bills were split to take care of the performers under the Performers Protection Amendment Bill to recognize the value of people who perform copyrighted works would be given an opportunity to earn from their talents and the value they add by performing these works. It was linked in such a way to the Copyright Amendment Bill that it became kind of integrated so we didn't pay too much attention to that bill at first. The first attempts were really focused on the Copyright Amendment Bill. Very, very soon, when we attended the sessions in Parliament, especially in 2017, uh, we had a, a, a very fancy, highfalutin and a well-spoken American lawyer who, who arrived there and he did a, did a presentation on why it is necessary for us to change the fair dealing clause. Fair dealing, for you who don't know, it has specific, a list of specific exceptions, which says if you use a copyrighted work under these circumstances, then it becomes fair dealing. If you do this, it becomes... So there's a specified list. No, he said, no longer can that apply. We introduced two words, such as. If you say such as, then you look at the list, but you can also hoi in this, and you can also put in that, and you can put in this, and you can use this this because it makes it easier for people to get access. And then they started talking about disadvantaged students must have access to educational opportunities. And we said, oh, that's a good idea. We really need that and we support that. But, but, but wait, wait, 
What about the rights of our composers, our authors, our creators, our inventors, our technologists who come up with beautiful ideas? Their families manage to get them into, into educational institutions. They get a beautiful education and then they apply their natural talent to come with new things. But they cannot have the rights of, of their inventions. They cannot have the rights of their music, their melodies, their African lyrics, their beautiful African designs protected. Because now, if you say such as, the big tech uh, digital platforms can come along and say, ah, oh, but let's just use a little bit of this. And then Gabby LaRue will say, but you can't use that. They'll say, challenge me in court. Now you're fighting the ant against the elephant. So these things started becoming, uh, uh, started occurring to us. Then we said, wait, let's go and see where this um, fair use comes from. We then looked at America. 1998, when, the, when, when the, they realized, hang on, two, Y2K is coming, we have to change legislation in the States. The, the Senate went in and they brought out a whole range of laws for America. I'm hoping my, my 15 minutes is still there. I'm still in. They brought out a whole range of, of laws for those who were inventing the internet, the information highway. And they thought, hey, but now if we make this info information highway available all over the world, anybody around the world is going to be able to upload things onto there. It may not be their own property. It may be someone else's intellectual property. Now they up, somebody else uploads it there and they come to us and say, you are liable. It's your information highway. It's your internet. We're going to sue you. And you know how the Americans are about suing you. They can sue you if, you if you stand on somebody else's floor. They like suing people. So they brought out one of the, le one of the laws that the Senate passed in 1998 in America was, we call it OSILA. It's online copyright infringement Liability Limitation Act, effectively known as the Safe Harbor Act. That means that the, those, the inventors of the internet and those big digital platforms who operate the internet are not, you are not able to hold them liable if a third party uploads content onto the internet and it belongs to, to you or it, belongs to, it doesn't belong to them. It's a safe harbor. And at the time, it was kind of necessary because else there would not be an internet. But fast forward many years later, and you've got YouTube, you've got Facebook, you've got TikTok, you've got all of these wonderful things that came and still new ones every single day. And everyone is now able to upload anything. If you own a Cuesta track, you can upload it under your own name. To give an example, I've discovered someone uploaded in Calacata, which is the property of myself and the late Mendoza. <laughs> the guy's name is I Will Stab You. <laughs> and it's been there for nine years. We didn't realize it's got millions of hits. It's got millions of hits. But Mendoza's family now, his widow and his kids can't claim one cent of that. Because it's safe harbor. You can't sue the internet you can ask for it to be taken down, but it's too late now. It's been there for nine years already. So these are the type of things that we started looking at. Now, that's when we started fighting and said, no, 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 no. The two reports said we need to protect our copyright holders more. We need to make sure that they are protected from exploitation. The beautiful African designs, like you can see on the ramps, the, the beautiful uh, fashion ramps in, in Europe where they use... These beautiful Siena Marina designs from Siena, Mar Siena, Mar Siena Mar Marina blankets. They walk there and they, they just use those prints without any, any regard for copyright. So essentially, my comrades, if you make copyright easier to access by saying such as, that's open to, trans trans to interpret interpretation and it's open to manipulation and exploitation, you don't protect us more, you protect us less. It's now easier for our copyright to be exploited. And unfortunately, each of us, young 
composers, authors, designers, fashion designers, graphic designers, etc. We are alone. If you have to take a big fashion house to court, who's going to help you? So I can stand here all day and go on, but those are the basics that we have. We pointed that out to the president after the first round went back. We're not the only ones in Europe. The European Parliament saw the same thing. They said, ah, 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 they brought out Section 17 and one or two other laws that said, if you use somebody's work, you still have to ask them. They will decide if it's fair or not. Sometimes they will say yes, but sometimes they will say, ah, 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 you must pay me. This is, my, this is what I'm going to send my children to college with. They are going to become academic writers that, that's going to educate our disadvantaged students. They need to get paid for their work as well. So it's a chain reaction. So I'm going to ask my colleague, um, Chola Makhamate, to come in and give you a couple of the more technical details. She's a very capable lawyer. She headed up the Copyright um, Coalition of organizations getting together. Now, just before she comes up, I want to make it quite clear. We are very supportive of the need for educational material to be available to disadvantaged students. We support it 120%. But it cannot be to the detriment of the composers and the authors and others, South Africans like them, many of them also disadvantaged. Now they manage to get an education and they start creating things, copyright, but then their copyright gets, you know, gets, uh, gets attacked and gets infringed and they've got no recourse. It's a self-defeating uh, it's a self-defeating clause in this bill. And for that reason, for no other reason, we are in support of this bill. We want this bill to be signed. But in the, with the current form of the fair use clause, we feel vulnerable. Is there anyone here who does not feel vulnerable? Is there anyone here who feels vulnerable? I can't hear you, comrades. The children here today, do you understand the issues? Because you are the next generation. Can I hear from the children? We are trying to protect you, youngsters. Me, my time is short. I've got an engagement with a higher authority in the next couple of years. But we're doing this for you, and we're asking our leaders. Please, leaders, protect us. My SG, we ask you today. We come to you with humility. We want to support this movement. We're going into an election. We want to have a reason to tell people, vote for our beautiful movement. Because even in Parliament, there was a small nanyana thing that happened there. But we have the wisdom and the vision and the faith and the courage to do what is right for our people. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for Comrade Gaby. As Samro is making their way through. Okay. I'm not very good at this, but I will try. Long live the creative industries, long live. Long live the creative industries, long live. Okay. So my name is Chola Makhamate. Um, yes, I do represent SAMRO, but I just want to clarify that I not only stand here on behalf of SAMRO, which is a collecting society um, in the creative industries, but I've also been given this opportunity to speak on behalf of several organizations within the creative and cultural industries. So I'm not standing here as SAMRO. I'm standing here as a voice of the creative and cultural industries. I know many of the leaders are here, they are seated here, they are supporting, they've assisted with making sure that you're all here. They have engaged continuously with the leadership of the ANC and other leaders, policy makers over this process. And I will not be able to name them one by one, but I just want it to be acknowledged that they are here um, and they have signed uh, a memorandum. I don't know if it's been handed over, but they are recognized in that memorandum. So that, that, that is really uh, who I am. I also represent an organization called uh, the Copyright Coalition of South Africa. It also represents uh, 
uh, organizations, trade associations, companies, etc., that are working within the creative industries of South Africa. That's not just music, it's film, it's television, it's animation, it's book publishing. So it's the broad spectrum of the creative industries of South Africa. And the reason why it's important for me to stand here is I want you to imagine a South Africa where you write a song and anybody can just use it. And you don't get paid for it, and you don't get acknowledged for it, and in order for you to prove that someone did something wrong, you must take them to court. That's what will happen if the bill is passed in its current form. Imagine if you write a book, and Mina and anybody else in this room goes and photocopies that whole book, and you don't earn a cent from it, and that person says, it's fair use. You must take them to court, and you must prove it's fair use. Imagine the actors who rely on scripts, who rely on production companies for them to make a living. Imagine someone writes a script and someone uses it. That's probably some AI bot uses it, and then there are no more scripts, or there's no more incentive for script writers in this country to write script. What are the actors going to do as performers? What are they going to act? Imagine a country where production houses in the film and television industry are so unable to put together a production because we have law that is so uncertain in the form of the Copyright Amendment Bill that they choose to go and have those productions elsewhere. They will pull out of the country which means the only broadcaster you will have to do anything from a film and television perspective in this country will be the SABC. That is what's going to happen if this bill is passed in its current form. And it's for many reasons, one of them being fair use, which is a problem which has been imported from the United States. And even more tragic is that if you are in a position to take somebody to court, let's say in the normal set of circumstances, if you write a song or you write a book, we all know when someone can use that song or when someone can use that book, Gabby has explained, and there are circumstances where they don't have to ask for your permission or they don't have to pay you and get a license fee. Those circumstances are called fair dealing. There's a closed list in our law. What this Copyright Amendment Bill does, it brings in this monster called fair use where now there's no closed list. Somebody can use your book or use your song in any set of circumstances and claim fair use. And then what will happen is that if you are even able to take them to court, whereas normally if there was an infringement, um, you'd be able to, to cite it and you'd be able to, to, to sort it out. If there's an infringement now, what the legislation currently says in its draft format is that if you win the case in court, you would only be able to get what you have gotten had they paid you in the first place. So for instance, you write a song or you write a book and somebody must pay you 10 rand to use your song or your book. They don't do it. You take them to court. The most, and you spend 10,000 rand. The most you'll get if you win is 10 rand. That's how the current law is structured. So it is a very problematic bill for many reasons. And it's also problematic because it assumes that the creative industry is one thing. It assumes that music is the same as books. It assumes that music is the same as film and television. It assumes that music is the same as animation. So what you have now in the current drafting is that they're trying to apply the rules in particular for music to film and television, to book publishing, to animation and other sectors. It's like taking the rules for soccer and applying them to hockey, to rugby, to netball, etc. It is going to be chaotic, which means there's going to be a lot of litigation from that as well. People are going to spend all their time in court trying to understand what this specific piece of legislation means. So it has many problems. Also, part of the challenge that we have now, uh, leadership, as we stand here, is that the bills have been passed in the National Assembly. The bills are now before the president. And the president's options are limited in terms of what he can do, because it was sent back once and he said, no, hang on. There are some constitutional problems here. One of them being that the, pro the process in the first place was the wrong process. They did not consult the provinces because in each province, arts and culture is practiced differently. So you are required to consult the provinces to understand what the issues are so that you draft legislation that is appropriate, not just for the provinces, but for the country as a whole. That didn't happen. The president said, no, nope, take it back, fix that issue. But there were a number of other issues, constitutionally speaking, which I'm not going to go into. Fine. That process happened in the National Council of Provinces. There were challenges there as well because we see it as a tick box exercise. Um, the way the process unfolded is that not everybody was given the opportunity to, to give input. Where input was given about the bills and how bad they are, they were simply ignored. What each province was also required to do is have what they call a negotiating mandate. So one vote for province. You then take it to the National Council of Provinces. In some provinces where the provinces said no to fair use, those delegates then went to the National Council of Provinces and said yes to fair use, going against the mandate of the people.
Now we find ourselves in a position where these bills have been passed in the National Assembly. The legislative process is as such that it is with the president, which is why this meeting is important. And the president has some challenges. He's only got a few options which he can exercise. We don't want him to sign this bill because it will be disastrous for you. It will be taking food out of your mouth. We don't want that. And he can't just not do anything about it. And those who are close to him who are lawyers can advise him. But the other challenge that he has, and this is why this engagement is important, because we do have proposals in terms of solutions for what the president can do to get himself out of a lot of the challenges that he now faces because the process is at such, such a late stage. The, the visually impaired or the blind in South Africa have trouble accessing certain materials. And they have trouble accessing certain materials because of the way the current Copyright Act is structured. They took government to court two years ago and they won. And, and the Constitutional Court said, you have two years, a deadline of two years within which you must address this issue within the Copyright Act. So one of the pressures that the, the President currently has is that he needs to operationalize that uh, uh, judgment by the end of September this year. That's one of the pressures that he has. The solution there, and there is a legal solution, we've engaged our lawyers, is that you can draft something that can be operationalized now, must be introduced by the ANC to Parliament, operationalize it now, and then you win over the visually impaired as stakeholders, because then you address their issues without having to pass this rubbish law, because that's what it is currently. It's going to cause so much damage, but you can fix that issue. The other issue that you have is that the Copyright Amendment Bill and the Performance Protection Amendment Bill have been linked by this umbilical cord. So think of the Copyright Amendment Bill like the mother and the Performance Protection Amendment Bill like the child, linked by an umbilical cord because they are cross-references. Now, this has caused so much division between creators who are catered for in the Copyright Amendment Bill and performers of the creations who are performers who are catered for in the Performance Protection Amendment Bill and primarily the actors because their concerns are valid. They are productions that are being played over and over and over again and they are not getting paid. They are being exploited terribly, and these needs to be dealt with. But what is not being communicated effectively or not, or not being presented to leadership is that if you kill the Copyright Amendment Bill, if you pass this horrendous piece of legislation, you are going to kill the Performance Protection Amendment Bill. So for instance, actors require scripts to act. If there are no scripts because there's no creation, what are the actors going to perform? So that division is great because there's this umbilical court, right? And what we had suggested a long time ago, and, and, and we're not listened to, um, I think primarily by the, the, the parliamentary legal advisor, because that's who's advising um, the National Assembly, right? They didn't listen to us because we said, decouple the two. Decouple the two so you can at least address the issues of the performers and deal with those then. They didn't listen to us. This is our proposal even now. We have also engaged our lawyers. There is a way they can draft something so that you decouple the two and you remove the cross-references to the two so that you can address the issues of the performers and deal with that. Because performers are not just actors. Performers are like Gabby. He's a composer, but he's also a performer. So he's a creator of works and he's also a performer of works. So Gabby can earn money either as a composer or performer, but as a composer, he will not be able to earn money because he'll have this copyright amendment bill, which will affect the performance. So you don't want a situation where you have legislation that is going to do exactly the opposite of what the ANC wants to do for the creative sector. So our solutions are one, operationalize uh, the, 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 the issues around uh, the blind or the visually impaired in this country and accede to Marrakesh because that's what the issue is. That can be done within a month. We have lawyers who can do that in a month. The decoupling can also be done within a month. We have lawyers who can do that within a month. But these suggestions, for whatever reason, have not been listened to. And now we find ourselves in a position where you have legislation that has gone through the National Assembly and places the president in a very precarious situation with limited options. We are saying we are able to provide some level of advice about how he can navigate this and deal with this. And we wish that you listen to us. We are available. We have always been available. And we thank you for the time that you've given us to speak to bring these matters to your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samro, for that enriching input. Comrades, let's afford the president of CISA an opportunity to also talk to you, Comrade President Joy. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Greetings, everyone. 
Uh, let me take this opportunity to pass my revolutionary greetings and acknowledge the leadership of this great mo movement, the movement of the people, the African National Congress. I want to greet our minister, who comrade Uzi Zigotwa, the the SG, the members of the subcommittee, comrade Tandi, I'm in Togo Titiza. I further extend my greetings to all the leaders present here today from the ANC and the Alliance Partners, the department, the leadership of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. Um, I'm not going to be able to mention all the departments that are here or the leaders that are here, but I greet all of you. Most of all, I want to pass my creative greetings to all the artists that are present here today. Also the leaders of different organizations in the cultural and the creative industry. Uh, Comrade SG, we even have provinces. Um, from, I've seen the leaders of SIFSA from North, Northern Cape. I've seen Eastern Cape. I've seen Wazulu Natal. I've seen Gauteng, Pumalanga. Limpopo, etc., etc. Thank you so much, comrades, for making time. <laughs> and we are very honored and humbled uh, leaders of the African National Congress as SIFSA and other stakeholders that you made time to come and be part of this engagement with the cultural and the creative industries. It was really challenging to put this engagement together, comrades, in such a very short space of time one thing that I want to applaud the African National Congress for was to establish this subcommittee in sports, arts, and culture. That is where we started noticing what I, I think the comrades were serious in the creative industry. Thank you so much. We have worked very well with these comrades. They've assisted us a lot. There were a number of engagements with them around the issues of the bills and other issues that are affecting the sector. So, colleagues, um, I also applaud you for responding to this call, so to engage the leaders of, of the African National Congress, so to seek and clarity on the issues that are directly affecting us as a sector, so to also seek understanding on the processes that led to the decision that brought us all here today. The decision that made us march to Ulutuli and the parliament in Cape Town. The decision that made all of us sifile ungati sialashwa in our own country. So we had a number of discussions that we even have a petition and letters. So this is our time, colleagues and members of the creative industry to get those clarities. The deployees of the ANC in government, Mr. Zizgot, our minister, uh, is also here. And when we met him, he was very clear to say, I'm going to stand with you, cultural and creative industry, on this matter. The leadership good department by here to engage with us. So I hope we'll find immeasurable solutions. Comrades, we find ourselves as creatives in a very difficult but interesting time, a, a time where we know our nation needs us the most. Our nation needs us because there is never a time in industry. In, 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 there was never a time in history in building of the civilization and nation, any, in, any community through time that we were never needed as artists by both the community and leaders of those communities. We are, in need, we are needed to heal the communities, to guide them, to rebuild, to warn them, to foretell the future, advance, push boundaries into the new world. We are needed to communicate the fears and aspiration of our people through our gift and talent. We are needed to help build economies and infrastructures that make all this possible. It is also a sad time because we are unfortunately, Comrade SG, feel extremely unloved, uncared for, and unprotected by our leaders because of the issue of the spill. A very bad time to be unloved, unprotected, and uncared for. We live in a time where 
where what we know, do and produce is needed globally by our capitalist. We live in a time where our gift are defined as knowledge economy and fuel of new gold and diamond known as intellectual property and copyright. A time where our culture, heritage and commodities that are globally is more expensive and precious than the most. A time where we, are de we are desperately need our leaders, our government to protect us and what we have in us. A time where global north is coming hard to mine our culture. Our cry is old uh, SG. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because you cannot be a South African if you do not know the plight of the creative industries. And the fortunate part, our SG has been the former minister of sports, arts and culture. So we are was Amanyama issues eight. In all the pain, uh, in all the pain, there will be an occasion of celebration of Grammys, flashed and brilliant here and there, moments that make us proud as creators of this country. Moments are equally aware that are used against us by those who seek to keep us down, and they take these moments and parade them um, as success while the majority of our creatives are languished in, in poverty without their pain and suffering being acknowledged. What is being communicated here, uh, SG and minister and other comrades by the leaders that presented before me, those, were com those who commented and reflected on the presentation, they were raising the pain that we have as artists. Um, at, at some point, this pain has to stop, comrades. It has to stop. We hope, as SIFSA, that today is the start of that moment where the pain will stop. It must stop with the President of the Republic not signing the Copyright Amendment Bill and the Performance Protection Bill. I really, comrade, don't want to delve into the painful experience of artists over the past 30 years. Their names and stories are, are all in the public domain. I acknowledge the pain and the brutal suffering even of their families. As if so, we want to echo the words of our founding father and call all of us to be, inten to be intentional in not creating a generation of artists that will, will be like the ones created by the apartheid law. We must say never and never again, and not under our watch. <laughs> this year we are celebrating 30 years of uh, um, we are celebrating 30 years of our hard-earned freedom and democracy. You will find it very difficult uh, for artists in this country to be to be in a celebratory mood about the 30 years of the democracy, uh, Minister. Yes, we understand there's a lot that needs to be done and there's a lot that has been achieved in the 30 years. But the artist, the artist is the custodian of the mood and character of this country. So they are the soul and the heartbeat of the people. If you are intentional or unintentionally depressing the community of artists, Comrade SG, as the ANC, it is about to do now, should they sign the bill, you will be slowly changing the mood of the country and its people and its economy. Their depressed mood will reflect on their songs. Creatives will start writing songs that are expressing their depression and will start uh, 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 reflecting our depression through our soapies, our movies, our theater, our arts, our paintings, architecture, landscape of our country. And there will be no life, no color in and around what they created and produced. In turn, they will produce unintentionally a violent and uncontrollable society that will never ever be able to be managed or contained because artists male bala into abantu bayalalela once we sneeze, the whole country catches the flu. I wonder what is the relation of a decay of moral values Ubuntu in our society, the rapes, the killings, etc and the state of mind of artists and how we are treated by the government that we expect to, pro to protect us. That would be the researcher to investigate because maybe the answer also lies with us as an industry. 
during apartheid and anti um, uh, apartheid movement coined the art coined the word art is a weapon art art was a weapon that was intentionally used to make a country ungovernable today that intent is unconscious and i suspect it is still delivered the same impact of the society should this bill be signed as if so, um uh, as she, as artists of this country, we want to, to, to remind the, the, the African National Congress that art is a very useful instrument that can be used to ensure that the eradication of poverty, unemployment, inequality can be fast-tracked. We can ensure that the healing of people, prosperity, economy, development, social cohesion, and related goals can be achieved should we prioritize art. If the leadership wants to change this country for better, the, culture, the cultural and creative industry are your answer. The whole world knows this. America knows this. Japanese know this. They all advance the economies of this world. That is why they invest so heavily in the sector and treat artists better, protect them, and make sure that their mood is always good. And Imudie to SG. In your car, in the Zaulung Simut, yet to let building a sign also Nemali, because there's nothing that we cannot do as the culture and the creative industry of South Africa. We are very talented. All that we need is to be resourced and be taken all care of and be protected. So we are here, uh, uh, SGCT, to better protection for us, even the Labor Department. We are not recognized as, lab, as, as, as workers, but we pay 25% of tax in this country. Sengela, sizengo moyo mushe, astoito ige namjanji, sizote li protection from the biggest liberation movement. Please liberate us. Uh, we, Especially on this issue of uh, Yama bills, there's nothing else that we are here to discuss. There's a lot that we we'll want to discuss, and fortunately, the subcommittee has promised us that we'll have a lot of engagements on every issues that are affecting the sector, and they promise to stand by us. So is our minister. The unfortunate part is we are going to election. So no value. So it says it's to no party. So bam tate bam but that's a decision of the African National Congress. In, <laughs> in closing, comrade, uh, we will be handing over a petition from different organizations in the creative industry. We have also written a letter to the president of this country. I think there's a lot that is happening. You are my elections, and what you need not to forget there is that as creatives, we are the members of the community. We know so we cannot wake up and say, as yes, and that is born. But it's affecting our lives, and as leaders, it will be said if I want to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little So we are just here to say to the African National Congress, we felt that we are not going to go on the street, write about you on the social media, etc. Et Let's call these comrades. And fortunately, the committee has met this. And hopefully, we are, coming, we are going to get a beautiful US Jews or Tinjing Exercise in Ogalon. So the creators of my country, because it um, no man, men, back on a these companies oh, Google, uh, to push a certain narrative. And this thing, I think, will come break, Uchola and, and um, okay. But she, as creative, I won't be able to afford a lawsuit to, to take about Google, about YouTube, should they be using our work. So money may sign a little bit, as a feeling, and as far go for manje. And we are not going to stop fighting. The unfortunate part is that. But I think there will be no need for us to fight after this engagement. Thank you so much for listening to our plight. Let's give a, a, another round of applause. Comrade SG, that was the words from the organizations that we are meeting here today. 
I think, Comrade SG, you can see and feel the emotions from those who spoke on behalf of this uh, various participants that are here. But I think uh, all is not lost. We have the leadership of the African National Congress that is a caring organization and also a listening organization here, listening to all of you. Rest assured, comrades, you are not talking to yourselves. You are talking to the leadership that is passionate about growing the sector of the creatives to greater heights. We are going to go ahead with our program. Just before we do that, comrades, I just wanted to indicate that we have had an engagement with yourselves. And in our last workshop, SACO, which is the South African Cultural Observatory, has made a, re re a research finding that indicates that the creative industry sector contributes close to 3% to the GDP of this country. In that, uh, in that same spirit, comrades, we must then start treating the department that is led by Comrade Zizi within that particular context. Even when we allocate resources, we must not throw our deployees under the bus. Comrade SG, artists are saying the same way we are treating agriculture is the same way we must also treat the department of DZEC so that... Comrade Zizi can be able to address the needs and the wants of the creatives in this country. We are also being joined here, comrades. I, want, I don't want to make that mistake. We are being joined by Comrade uh, P.S. of Gauteng, Comrade T.K. Nisa, who is also passionate about the growth and the development of the creatives. Comrade T.K., can you just wave to the participants? I also saw Comrade Mashengi Bengu, who's the spokesperson of the African National Congress. She's also here. We are also being joined by our permanent invitee in the subcommittee, Comrade Sipombele. That is the leadership so far that has uh, graced these engagements. Comrade, we are going to then move to the next item, wherein we are going to usher onto the podium the Secretary General of the African National Congress, as he does that, comrades, comrades Fikilem Balula does not need any introduction to all of you as the creatives and the society at large. Comrade Mbalula led the African National Congress Youth League PYA structures as, the, as both the president of the Youth League and the SG of the Youth League. He has also led government at various levels, he has been the Minister of Police. So if amongst you, you want to be behave as criminals, he has got those expertise to deal with you. He has also led the sports sector in the country. He has also led the transport ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, let's rise up as we, uh, we afford the SG an opportunity to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Comrade uh, Comrade Tandi, the chairperson of our subcommittee. Uh, Comrade Tandi is very passionate, and uh, she forced uh, this meeting. And then uh, she forced this meeting. Uh, if you think of doing. She's the first one who's toy toying uh, there at Lutuli House. So we didn't make a mistake with the est establishment and the formation of this subcommittee in the ANC. It is long overdue and uh, it is working. Uh, comrades, the first announcement I want to make to you is that President Ramaphosa will meet with you on the 1st of April. Um, 
um, that is done and he will meet with you at the union buildings. Um, from this meeting, I can assure you that um, we take your demand forward and we are supporting it that the bill must not be signed. And um, the African National Congress today, led by myself, Figile Mbalula, Secretary General, uh, have taken up that particular demand on your behalf. Um, Comrade uh, Zizi, the minister, uh, the deputy minister of uh, DTIC, the president of the Creative and Cultural Industries Federation of South Africa, uh, Joy Mbewana, rep representatives from Tumsa, Saif, Samik, and for the Arts, Sakpu, Kriga, Sister Wood, um, the chairperson of the ANC NEC subcommittee, Comrade Tandi, the chairperson of the ANC ETC, Comrade um, ETC subcommittee, um, I don't know where you get that Togo is the ETC subcommittee chair. Oh, the chair. Now I'm the SG in the acting and in the speech. They can put you into trouble. And members of the ANC NEC subcommittees. Comrades. It is correct that you come to the ANC because the ANC governs. And I can tell you when we wake up on the, 20, on the 30th of May, the ANC will still be government. Now, I know you raise issues with power. And not, I saw some jokes happening uh, the other day, people promising you things that they could not do in the past nine years. And then they come and promise you that we'll do this and do that. You have come to the right place. And we have come to power. And that power is you. And that's why the president will meet with you. Because that is the center. Um, I know some of the people who raised matters with us at Lutuli House are not here because of commitments. And they are artists the past and present. And I don't judge them if they are not here. But you are speaking on their behalf today. And I want to thank you for responding and for coming to this gathering. And I want to assure you on behalf of the ANC that it is not in vain. We must show the muscle that we govern and we are in power. And that we do as you wish because you put us into power. And we must listen. And that is the essence of it. So I want to thank you uh, for coming here and assure you that the ANC will lead and will be on your side uh, in this regard. Allow me to express profound gratitude at the opportunity to engage the creative sector. This is one dynamic sector that has not only been pivotal, in defining our unique identity, which we collectively claim as a nation, but has also been in the forefront of the liberation struggle for freedom and democracy. It is therefore only natural and just that this very diverse sector must be among the sectors that enjoy the fruits of freedom and democracy in South Africa. That is why over the years, since the dawn of freedom and democracy in 1994, we have been alarmed at the continued impoverishment of this sector due to a number of reasons, all boiling down to its various forms of unfair exploitation. For instance, we have witnessed too many great and small artists dying paupers 
And each time that happens, we will sentimentally vow we will correct this anomaly uh, that give rise to this continued exploitation. Over the past two decades, but more so since at least 2016, we have seen a concerted effort at correcting those anomalies. Hence the process to amend the two pieces of legislation. Firstly, the Copyright Amendment Bill, and secondly, the Performance Protection Amendment Bill. Let me forthrightly say, we believe you make a compelling case on the arguments you have advanced, particularly with regards to the issues of the Copyrights Amendment Bill. In the context of what has been designated, quote-unquote, as fair use, it will be gross injustice to ignore the points you have raised to the extent that, as a sector, you will be prejudiced. Hence, the importance of the consideration to return this bill to Parliament for further considerations. We do note that this Copyright Amendment Bill was first introduced in Parliament in 2017 and subsequently returned to Parliament again in 2019, as it has been said, to allow for further consultations with the affected sectors broadly and hope this time it will be dealt with in a manner that reflects the interests of all the stakeholders that are here today. And I understand that whilst there may be challenges with both these pieces of legislation, more problems pertain to the Copyright Amendment Bill. And that whilst the problem with royalties somehow persists, there are nonetheless functional avenues established by which artists could, for instance, through radio monitor, enforce their rights to fair pay payment with the various collecting agencies involved, such as uh, SAMRO. I suppose we should uh, advance means by which the creative sector could be empowered to enforce their rights in this regard through the available avenues. And if needs be, the creation of more sustainable ones. But these are details that I'm certain you can better explain and point out how we can enhance their solution. Throughout the COVID period, when our economy suffered production, uh, in various fronts, characterized by lockdowns, affecting many sectors, including the creative sector, we nonetheless steamed ahead through both houses of parliament to amend these two pieces of legislation to conform not only to our constitutional prescripts, but also to both uh, international standards as well, uh, most importantly, the demands by the creative sector here in South Africa uh, for justice. Whilst uh, many could benefit from UIF during the COVID period, the creatives were left outside as they do not have rights uh, analogous to those of employees. The Performance Protection Amendment bills seek to address this, as alluded by COSATU, in their statement of the 26th September 2023, when uh, welcoming this bill as passed by the National Province, by the National Council of Provinces. What is clear is that there is no consensus on the bills. Some arguing that these two bills, in fact, modernize our legal instruments in line with the changed technological world, whilst some argue that it gives grounds for the potential erosion of their material interests. 
As the ANC, we noted that the creative sector was even more vulnerable as government pumped in 800 million directly to help artists during those tragic times. We encourage government to establish community arts centers that will help cultivate art skills amongst all our communities beyond formal education institutions, which over the years has organically produced many luminaries in the sector. As many of you, you will know, we are part of the Banner Convention on the, con on the protection of copyrights and the obligations that arises from that, uh, that help define how we couch our legislative uh, instruments. Our understanding on the intent of the amendments be added on these two pieces of legislation was to ensure justice for all stakeholders involved and primarily the creators of the artwork. But like in all endeavors to bring about transformation in various sectors, we must duly be wary of the adversity of unintended consequences. Unintended consequences can jeopardize well-meant intentions. As the ANC, we are always open to being advised on the blind spots of our national transformation program. Because legislation and any other transformation agenda does not exist for itself, but to serve the interests of our people. And that is why we have said to our comrades, you must deepen social transformation and not be transformed by the system. And that is why some of our people who have deployed in government proudly so, when you look at them, they've been transformed by the system. They explain it better to you than what it is expected of them to transform. <laughs> and that is why we say we don't need such people in the transformation agenda. Who explain non-transformation non uh, in government better than the architects uh, of non-transformation agenda themselves? That is precisely why we are here today. I understand that critical to the outcry over the copyright amendment bill in particular is with regards to the various meaning and potentially unintended application of what is understood, quote-unquote, fair use, as opposed, for instance, quote-unquote, fair dealing. In South Africa and many other jurisdictions across the world, we have historically mainly utilized, quote-unquote, fair dealing. As this is supposedly predictable, as it is clearly spelled out in law or regulations on what is permissible to be utilized by third parties without financial compensation or gain. Of course, with the proviso that no profit is being accrued in the process. However, that the current amendment leans more, quote-unquote, on fair use, which is dubbed unpredictable and precisely for that reason prejudicial to the profitability of the artwork by the creative sector. And that uh, during the process to amend the legislation, the creative sector feels left out in uncertainty and to its own prejudice. I also understand that the consequence of this is to lobby the president not to sign into law the bill as finalized by both houses of parliament. Of course, I also understand that there is a contrary view that suggests that, quote unquote, fair view is not what is suggested by some to mean, in that it is not necessarily unpredictable nor prejudicial to the creative sector as advanced by some institutions of higher learning. This view further suggests that there is a lot to be gained by South Africa as a whole in areas of intellectual development, such as schools and universities. 
wherein portions of artworks could be utilized for non-profit purposes. This argument, this argument further states that the technological world is so dynamic that it will be difficult to outline in advance all possible instances of permissible usages without compensation to the authors of the artwork, hence the apparent introduction, quote-unquote, of the fair use principle. The argument advanced in this regard further suggests that without fair use as principle, the various fields of intellectual development, including institutions of public uh, criticism and review, such as the media, will find it difficult to ply their trade where the arts are involved. The critical case facing all of us here today is what then becomes the balance without simplifying this complex matter into a quote-unquote for or against debate. How must the legislature address the concerns by the parties to either ends, uh, to either ends of this debate, taking into cognizance the priority interests of the art work creators? Certainly, we need Solomonic wisdom, and that wisdom can only come from this meeting and from the stakeholders. And it has been articulated clearly and precisely what needs to happen. My suggestion, therefore, will be that whilst each sector asserts its interest, it must think about the, det the detrimental effects that will have on other stakeholders and the process and the progress of our nationhood. This is the principle that the legislature must ordinarily be guided by as it craft a legislation. As mentioned by many, consultation will be central to such Solomonic wisdom. Of course, we could say consultation was done, but clearly the creative sector feel left out. We must therefore agree that further consultations will be necessary. And there are other suggestions that have been made in terms of what needs to happen. Because indeed, we cannot afford to go ahead and promulgate a piece of legislation that one party believes it is grossly unfair. It is our considered view that none other than the creative sector can best tell what is in the interest of this broad field. But as I have indicated, the creatives do not exist in a vacuum. And I'm certain none of us here seek to create an island for the creatives to which the rest of society must have no business altogether. I believe such a scenario will in fact be detrimental in the long run to the local creatives as institutions such as universities will then rely on external artworks for public criticism and the various usages that underscores the current contestations. A just and fair middle ground is necessary and essential. This is what I have designated today as Solomonic uh, wisdom. As I conclude, allow me to restate our full support as the ANC on the creative sector. You carry in your shoulders the burden to define our unique identity and culture as a nation. Who could forget how the song Jerusalem kept the world, the whole world, dancing to local rhythm and lyrics whilst catapulting South Africa as a major cultural center internationally? I could count many examples in music, film, and other art forms such as the Lion King, whose inspiration is certainly our artwork, and that helped prop up our country as an admirable destination for tourism and so forth. Let us together address the unintended consequences by hearing each other out for the common and various or differential interests of all stakeholders, 
involved and ultimately of our country as a whole. And as we do so, let us also be mindful that these two bills are complementary to each other. Hence, they should be read together for a comprehensive understanding of the legislative environment on the creative sector. On our part as the ANC, we will advise the president not to sign the copyright <laughs> amendment bill. And doing so, we are enjoined by the letter from Yvonne Chakachak to the president that explicitly stated the same that is pending through consultations and many other voices. And by the way, let me correct something here as I conclude about Amapian. And then, and, then, and then somebody says, President Ramaphosa says, ANC have created Amapiano. Amapiano evolved out of the evolution of the popular culture. And that popular culture started its explosion after 1994, where young people of South Africa defied the odds and refused to become copycats. And they kept their own destination. And that explosion started with Kwaito. Leave alone that Arthur and, uh, and uh, Oskido and them fought about who's king. But popular culture explosion, Bumshag, they were called Bumshaga generation. They exploded. They were wearing skimpy dresses. And then they started changing from playing music with supporting drums, they then started to play with a dad. And then uh, I was this Yvonne Bakalaba Fainter because Bona, they were doing what it was called a bubble gum, but it was an African beat. And then it was called bubble gum when it was denigrated. Yvonne Chaga Chaga, Brenda Farsi, Messi Pagela. Rebecca Malope. You can count them. Okay, Chico Twala. No, we are still one. And uh, we miss you, Manelo. Where are you? And then the youth, when freedom came, they said, We too are here. We're taking it further. They came with Kwaito. And then today it has developed with young people rapping in their own mother tongue. Yeah. And then they came right from Mafike. And they came down from Mafike and it exploded to the country. And then it came out of Deben. Was that Deben? And then it, whilst we were watching that, the boys came and exploded with Amapiano to the world. Now, it is not a claim that freedom did not play a part. Apartheid suppressed our talents. We were way behind, but our boys are catching up. And long live to AKA, and long live to the rap stars of our nation, and long live to everyone who have taken the arts to another level. We did not impose ourselves to this evolution. It just coming. The youth are saying, we are not copycats who are who we are. I see the Nigerians are fighting us. But when they did their thing, we supported them. But now they say, Ama Piano belongs to them. But we keep doing it. It doesn't belong to them, it's ours. And you guys are doing it. And that is what we are celebrating. And that is what Ramaphosa says. The Grammy Award of my brother, Mapumul Nati is a Grammy Award of South Africa. Yes. But it did not start with him. It started with Black Mambazo. Yes. Upwards and onwards we are going. Yes. And up to our last twin sister, Tyler, mm -hmm. making us proud in the international scene. Yes. We are South Africa, and this is our arts. We are not copycats. We are South Africans, yes. and we are soldiering on. And this is what democracy is giving us. It says, do what you want to be and be the best at what you are doing. Arts is part of that. If you want to become a beauty queen, become the best beauty queen. Yeah. 
If you want to become a slave queen, become the best slave queen. If you want to become any other thing, slay and become the best at what you do. This is what democracy has provided. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade SG, for that uh, electrifying keynote address that you have delivered here. Can we give him another round of applause, Comrade? <laughs> this is the Secretary General that we wanted to give you, some of us, in 2012. But we went to Mangawu, we got beaten, we came out through back doors, but we did not give up. We came, we came now in 2022, he is now the Secretary General. Indeed, we want the Secretary General who has content, who has clarity. Thank you very much, Comrade SG. <laughs> Comrades, the organizations that are here have uh, signed the petition that must be given to the president. I'm going to request that the comrades come through, comrade uh, Gaby comes through together with the leadership on behalf of all of you as participants to come and hand over the petition to the SG. <laughs> She's all celebrating, man. She's all coming up. Unity, 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 man. Unity, unity, oh, unity, my artist, Unity, unity, oh, unity, my artist, Pagama, Pagama, oh Pagama, if I went to Oh, unity, unity, oh, unity, my artistic Unity, unity, oh, unity, my artistic Pagama, Pagama, oh, Pagama, seems I went to eat Pagama, Pagama, Unity, unity, oh, unity, my artist, Amanda, thank you very much, comrades. We are not going to allow any elements of disruptions. Can we be in order? The organizations are now afforded an opportunity to hand the memorandum to the SG. Can we create space for the SG to come and receive the memorandum?
And as, they, as he, he received the memorandum, comrades, let us be on Twitter, on Facebook, and all other social media under the hashtag, let's do more together. Another hashtag is ANC Arts and Culture. The other hashtag is that ANC Industry Sector. Comrades, let's occupy that social media space. Thank you very much, colleagues. We can now go back to our places where we were sitting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, comrades. We are still on, we are still on. Guys, comrades, can we go down so that we allow comrades easy to come and do the vote of thanks? I shall a pansy bamboom teto. I shall a pansy bamboom teto. Sifuni no bala tina. Sifuni no bala no contente. Sifuni no bala. Sifuni no bala no. Opportunity with the SG when the program has officially been closed. Comrades, can we please allow us to proceed with the program? No, we'll do that. Thank you very much, comrades. We'll have a group photo at the end of the program, comrades. Let's allow Comrade SG to be... Okay. Thank you, Comrade Gaby, for that memorandum and the petition that you've just handed. We are, we are moving right along with our program, comrades. We are now going to call upon our member of the subcommittee and also our deployee in government who is responsible for the development of this se sector. We are now requesting Comrade Zizi Kodwa to come and do the vote of thanks. Comrade Zizi, as he comes, let's appreciate him through a round of applause. Amanda, long live unity of creative and cultural sector, long live. Long live unity of creative and cultural sector, long live. Thank you very much, uh, SG. My role is simple today. Is not to explain very complicated issues. You reminded some of us SG when we were the SG of the Youth League. I see some of the older faces here, they will recall that. When you had a theme, young people seizing opportunities of democracy. That was way back. And that is where some of this musical journey you are talking about came about, SG. We want to thank you for that. We want to also thank you for giving guidance on behalf of the organization. We want to thank the chairperson of the committee, Comrade Tandi. Comrade Tandi kept us busy the whole day yesterday to make sure that this meeting sits with all the difficulties that we went through. Let's give Comrade Tandi, our chair, a big round of applause. It was not easy to get this meeting together, but she worked with Comrade Joy our president, throughout the night to have us here today. I want to thank those who came here on stage to hand over 
the petition to the SC on behalf of the sector. It was through them that we were able to deal with many complications and contradictions in the process. They kept on going to Lutuli House, they kept on going to Sichaba House, they kept on going to Parliament in Cape Town to say the ANC must be on the side of the vulnerable and the weak. And those who are vulnerable and the weak are here present today. And the ANC can't be found wanting because it is here today representing the weak and the vulnerable. So I want to thank every one of you who have come here today. We must make sure as we march towards 29th of May, we march with one voice. That voice is the sector is united around the issue that was presented here today. The president will meet with the sector very clear. I see Cape is jumping up and down. The president is very clear as guided by the SG of what needs to be done. And I think with that, comrades, we'd like to thank you very much for coming. This meeting was quite very fruitful. If there are any engagements, we'll continue to engage as the ANC. But thank you very much. Thank you.